Hey guys, Capture One have just rolled out the October 2023 release of their raw editor, Capture One. And the big new feature in this point release is what they refer to as flawless AI masking. Now that's a bold claim, and so of course I had to check it out. So I have downloaded the 30 day trial once more of Capture One. I've selected some photographs and I'm going to compare the AI masking within Capture One to the AI masking in its main competitor, Adobe Lightroom. So let's look at these test shots I've selected and see how Capture One performs in comparison to Lightroom Classic. <laughs> Alrighty, uh, here we are in Capture One 2023 October release, and we have these new buttons here in the layer and mask section. We've got subject, background, AI brush, and AI erase. Fairly obvious what they all do. Subject is when there's some strong central subject in the image, it will select it. Background, ditto, it's kind of the opposite of subject, I guess. We've also got this brush tool for when there's something slightly more nebulous to select, and we've got an AI eraser to tweak those masks. Now the problem with a lot of landscape photographs such as this one is that there really is no central subject, nothing, nothing strong that the AI can identify. So if I click the subject masking button it's not going to come up with anything of any great use. As you can see it's selected some weird abstract portion in the center of the image and the same thing I suspect will happen if I click background. Let's see what it comes up with. Probably the exact opposite of what we just did yeah it doesn't know it doesn't understand the photograph it doesn't know what the subject is it certainly doesn't know what the background is so the obvious next step is to use this ai brush tool and there are two ways you can use this you can either click around the image to select portions of it or you can drag a selection around something so for instance if i come down here and let's say i just start from somewhere down this bottom point here and make sure i get most of the tree in you can see it's already doing a better job so what will happen is when i release the mouse it's supposed to refine the mask and hopefully the selection here will be improved and we get a fairly good selection a mask of this particular bush and it hasn't done a very good selection of this bush at all it kind of has it's got the boundaries of the bush selected but all the gaps in between where the sky is it's selected them too so in terms of landscape photography selections it's absolutely no use whatsoever so i don't think the problem is with ai masking in capture one per se, merely the implementation of that masking in there. To show you what I mean, I'm going to go into Adobe Lightroom and we've got the same image here. Now, if I select the subject in this, I don't expect Lightroom to fare much better because as I said, there is no obvious central subject for it to select. So just to see how it goes, let's select subject. I think it's just selected a central portion of the tree here. If we go to the white on black mode, we can better see what's going on. Yep, it selected just that weird portion at the base of that bush. So not much use for subject masking in Adobe Lightroom either. But the point is Adobe Lightroom is a lot more flexible than that. And I can select a sky mask, for instance, and then I could even finesse this by subtracting from the base there. So I just get the skies, put a simple linear gradient in here to finesse the mask. And instantly I've got a perfect sky mask going on. If I turn off the overlay, I can then, you know, stick a dehaze on that, drop the highlights, whatever I need to do. There is no equivalent of a sky mask in Capture One because that's not what that application is about. It's about studio photographers so let's see how capture one does when there are some strong subjects in the image here's a photograph i took down in melbourne and we've got lots of people in this indoor market and there are several ways i can go about selecting 
some or all of these people take this lady on the left here i can drag the selection brush around her and you can see it's already done a fairly good selection we're missing her right leg but as i said in previously it will finesse this when i release the button so let's see how it does and if i turn on the mask we can see it hasn't actually selected her right leg as well and we've got a bit of the cheese counter behind her head so it's not doing a brilliant job at spotting these edges and it's got to be said that's a fairly strong boundary line here if we zoom in on this lady let's move over here she's got very dark hair it should be fairly simple for the mask to spot the cheeses behind there but it hasn't it's included them so what i need to do in this case is click on the ai eraser and select the bits that i don't want and we should then if i click off there have a much cleaner image and then we can also come down here click on the old ai brush and click on her leg and her shoe and her hand and her other shoe which i didn't notice it failed to pick up before and oh missed that and there you go we've got a much stronger mask now let's click off there and we got there in the end but it was not plain sailing it messed up i had to finesse the mask and this is a fairly strong subject so we've got a point of reference let's see how adobe lightroom does i'm going to come over to the masks and it has already picked up automatically all of the people in this photograph and it's individually masked them for me already so there's our lady on the left so i've done absolutely nothing here and i can click on this mask of her create a mask from that person it's identified let's zoom in on this one and it's managed to differentiate her head from the cheeses in the counter behind got a bit of leakage over here on the left and it hasn't got all of the bag and we've also got some leakage down in the shadows here and on her foot but remember lightroom managed to identify all the people without me doing anything and i can come in here and create a new mask from the people and select any of these so this time let's give capture one and lightroom a much simpler task and we've got this pelican here uh, floating in the river and it should be a fairly easy subject to mask so let's just use the subject button this one click button here and it's done a pretty good job as you can see let's zoom in on the bird and shift over here so we've got a bit of leakage by the bill uh, and on the water also where the gap is here between the neck and the body and it's missed a few of the feathers but it's done a pretty good job all things considered and we can of course tidy this up fairly quickly with the old removal tool let me just click on there and there and that's dealt with that and we can click just here i think can't get rid of that oh it's taken the whole beak out and um, so probably do that by hand i'm guessing and we can add the tail feather here there we go so let's zoom out pretty good selection and let's see how lightroom does just so we can compare the two where's the lightroom gone here we go so got a couple of options here for the masking i can use the object brush tool or i can use the subject tool let's do the same as capture one so let's use the subject mask click the button and see what we get looks pretty good let's zoom in it's had a similar kind of problem to uh, capture one here a little bit of bleed into the water it's also captured quite a bit of the water here it's made the same error uh, where the neck goes to the body it's got the tail feathers it's a slightly better mask and I can finesse that in exactly the same way with the uh, the brush tool. Just brush out these areas, no problem at all. I'm using the auto mask tool, of course, just here so that there's some edge detection going on and I can easily remove stuff. So let's shrink the brush down and just get rid of that. 
that's much better so i'd say lightroom and capture one were fairly evenly paced there they were doing very similar selections of the bird however adobe lightroom has a very awesome object selection tool which i found does a much better job than the subject selection so what i'm going to do is create a new object mask and i'm just going to create a paint over this in the very broadest terms so that's all i'm doing and let's see what we get this time and as you can see that's a near perfect mask we can zoom in on that it's got the neck right there's no leakage here it's a little bit of leakage on the water but otherwise this is a, a far superior mask right let's try a slightly more straightforward landscape photograph is one i took down in uh, jervis bay we've got a nice clean skyline here should be fairly easy for the software to pick up be interested to know what it decides is the subject of this photograph i'm guessing it's going to go for the wharf uh perhaps the decking maybe the uh, navigation let's have a look so let's Let's say select subject and we have yeah, a really nice mask of these wharf poles here and the steps you know fair enough i don't really know what the central subject of this photograph is either so i've got no complaints about that it's done a really nice job let's zoom in on this yeah very crisp indeed could do with a little bit of work around there by the legs of it but otherwise really nice let's take that one as a win now let's zoom out again and what about the skyline so we'll get the old ai brush uh, i'll just delete this mask here and uh, you can see already we just hover over there it looks like it might do a fairly okay job so let me see if i can grab the old selection tool so uh, when i release it should refine that mask that looks like it's done a really nice job actually let's zoom in and see how it did with the fiddly bits with the trees because i thought i saw it hasn't got any of these gaps in the trees it's done okay where there's this strong delineation between the sky and the ground but there are obvious gaps where the trees are where it's struggled that's okay that's the escarpment although it's picked up a bit of the escarpment here as well pretty perfect there but you know that's a very strong line so it's not terrible uh, equally it's not brilliant let's see what we can do in adobe lightroom okay so same photo in lightroom let's see what the sky mask does with this we have the mask and we'll zoom in and you can see from the purple here it has picked up the sky in between the branches maybe not down here missed a little bit but it's done a far far better job than capture one did that's for sure this is all correct here it's done a better job it's missed out that shady bit of the escarpment there which capture one did this is all absolutely perfect so far superior job out of interest let's see how uh, adobe lightroom did, does with the subject what's it going to decide as the subject okay not as good so we've got this background area here that it's decided is the subject uh, and the bits that it has decided with other subject it hasn't done a great job of masking the top of this pole is not masked hasn't done the feet bit raggedy around the edges of here it's not a great selection at all that subject mask i think in this instance a much better option would be the old object mask i decide what the subject of the photo is so if i just do this and then this i'll add with the object brush like so and add with the object brush maybe shrink the brush a little bit like so and like so and there we have an absolutely perfect selection of the subject it's just that i decided what was the subject not the ai now i would just like to point out that when i saw the implementation that capture one had gone for with the ai brushes it reminded me of something and i'd just like to show you the way that 
the Pixelmator team implemented masking and they've got this tool here the quick selection tool and watch what happens if I go over the images does that look familiar I wonder if the capture one team drew some inspiration from this rather neat little tool as you can see it does a pretty damn good job of selecting stuff and uh, I can make a new layer and do adjustments on that. Anyway, it just struck a chord with me. So there you go. I congratulate the Capture One team on finally entering the AI era and implementing the AI tools that people want. I don't think AI should be used in the creative sense for creating photographs from scratch but for this kind of stuff for masking it's a really useful and powerful tool and one that i greatly appreciate in adobe lightroom there's clearly quite a bit of work to be done before the masking capabilities in capture one match what's possible in adobe lightroom they could do with enhancements like intersections and the ability to add and subtract with things like with the object tool and that kind of stuff that would be greatly appreciated the machine learning model that they've deployed wasn't the most accurate as we've seen i mean adobe lightroom was very similar on some of these tools for the subject and the object selection but for things like the sky and stuff like that and uh, adobe lightroom was far superior competition in this marketplace is a healthy thing and it's really nice to see Capture One introducing these new features to their software. And I look forward to future iterations of it as it improves and keeps Adobe on their toes so they can iterate better versions for the Adobe Lightroom users too. And that will do us before this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like. And if you appreciate this kind of content, consider subscribing to my channel for more generalized drone video and photography bollocks from yours truly until the next time guys ta-ta